Well, hello, welcome to the video. This one is going to be so controversial. A lot of people are going to be a bit upset by this, but who cares, eh? Let's just go with it, because I'm going to talk about the worst bands in pub rock. Now, obviously, this is very subjective, and a lot of this is based on my own experiences, so it might not be everybody's list. I don't think it will be everybody's list apart from mine, because, as I say, it's very personal to me. I'm talking about people who I perceived as not very good but other people thought they were great and the first one that is a very good example of that because that's Morrissey Mullen a lot of people including the landlord of the cricketers thought that Morrissey Mullen were the best band ever they were formed in the mid 70s in the USA where the two main guys Jim Mullen on guitar what's important is that the technique must always be the servant and not the master in order to allow you to express whatever it is you're trying to express in music. From the Average White Band and Dick Morrissey, a very famous, very good sax player, mostly jazz. <laughs> and met up and formed a band called Morrissey Mullen. They came back to England and played mainly pubs. They got on very well with the landlord of the cricketers where I was, to the extent that he had a deal with them where they got 90% of the door and free use of the PA, which basically nobody got that sort of thing. Normally, you would pay somebody like, I don't know, say somebody like Gino at Washington and the Ram Jam Band would get something like 400 pounds or 75% of the door, whichever was the greater. This varied according to the act and according to the venue, but that's basically that word. But Morris and Mullen were on 90% of the door and got free use of the EA, which meant I had to do the door myself at the cricketers because I couldn't afford to pay somebody to do it. And I had to pay for the PA, which would be about 30 or 40 pounds just for the engineer. So I paid for that myself out of the 10%. Plus, the worst part of it was I'd have to sit through two hours of excruciating, to me, jazz funk music, which I absolutely hated. And here's an example of the sort of thing I would... <laughs> Jim Mullen didn't really like me, actually, I don't think. Um, or was it just him realising I didn't like them? He he and I never got on. Dick Morrissey, on the other hand, I got on quite, well, very well with, actually, because I booked his um, jazz quintet afterwards, just so he died. And uh, they, they were very good, and they pulled a lot of jazz people. Again, jazz is not my thing to be honest with you. And jazz funk is definitely not my thing. Oh, it, this was every month this was. This was once a month at least. If actually Kenny the Landlord had his way, it would be every Saturday night would have been Morrissey Mullen. Thankfully, they were far too popular to do that deal. So the first worst band in a pub rock was Morrissey Mullen, at least for me. And the second band, again, another personal one, totally other side of the spectrum, and that's the Happy Mondays. <laughs> Yes, Happy Mondays were, at least once or twice, a pub rock band. Because they came down to London, I think it was 86 or 87. I don't have a record of it, and it's not on their website, surprisingly. And it was a total disaster. Their agent told me it was their first London show, this band who were the talk of Manchester. I wasn't there, which is either a shame or a great thing, because it wouldn't have been my thing at all. And they turned up, and when I got back, because I think I was... At Dingwalls watching Half Man Half Biscuit. Might not have been, but that was my recollection. And I came back to the pub and unusually people were waiting for, for me because I got back about, what, midnight, something like that. And the pub obviously closed at 11 and the manager was waiting for me. And he told me that they'd had to throw the band out. I think they played at half hours, but then they were actually thrown out. Cause, well, the dressing room in those days was in the pub kitchen, which to access it was behind the bar. And on their way to the kitchen, they would picked up at least one bottle of Scotch whiskey from behind the bar. And they basically stolen the whiskey and they drunk it. And there were about 10 people in the audience. And apparently they were, don't, weren't really treating it very seriously, as you'd expect from the Happy Mondays. They were out of their heads, apparently, and it was total mayhem. And the landlord had to be called and he threw them out of the pub. That's why Happy Mondays are possibly the worst pub rock band 
ever because they didn't really want to play pubs. I think their next London show, the first one on their website is at Finsbury Park and this great big building from the thousands of people supporting New Order. So that's how they'd like to be remembered, not as a pub rock band, not surprisingly. Before we get to the next worst pub rock band of all time, and there were several more by the way, I've got something I'd like to ask you please. Please subscribe. Please watch all my videos if you can stand it, that would be great. Like if you can, if you like it, please like. And comment, let me know what you think. And who's the next worst pub rock band of all time? What you bring the Screwdriver. Those of you who know about the things like this will know that Screwdriver were a far-right skinhead band. At least they were in their second phase, because they had two phases. The first phase was when they were from Blackpool, I think, or Fylde. And they were like a, just like a skinhead band, and they, they played that sort of stompy sort of music. When Ian Stewart reformed the band, he made them into a far-right thing, and they very objectionable. I was running gigs around this time at the White Lion and I was putting on Thursday night was my anarcho punk band and Screwdriver I am let to believe came down and they beat up a band called A Conflict who were unloading their gear they attacked them with baseball bats and um, sledgehammer sticks or whatever they call them see I'm not particularly a sledgehammer type of person come get it come on come on come on try it try your luck get a bastard not many people know this, but for a very brief time, I was persuaded to take over running of a venue in the Angel Isn't It in a pub called the Blue Coat Boy, called Skunks. And the whole concept of it was that it was supposed to be punks and skinheads. This was probably early 80s, just after the punk thing had started. And at the time, punks and skinheads traditionally were loggerheads they didn't really get on and this was an idea by a record label guy Laurie Pryor and his partner whose name I'm afraid has totally escaped me and the idea was they're going to mix the two types of music and everybody gets on and fine but everybody didn't get on and I was and I was in charge of this for about I think four nights and in the end I just walked out because one of the four nights Screwdriver played actually it must be about 83 because I think that's when they reformed although I thought it was 82 maybe 81 but anyway they played and they were horrible. They their lyrics were disgusting. Africa, the South African man that went blew the off. Fucking beautiful. Now it's just a pity that he didn't do the same thing to Nelson Mandela. But there was another band on who had a guy who was an Asian member of the band and they bullied him. And it was just a horrible thing. And after that I just washed my hands of the whole thing. So Screwdriver is my third worst pub rock band of all time. Who's the fourth one, you ask? Again, I'm going to surprise people, it's Dire Straits. <gasps> I saw Dire Straits on the Old Grey Whistle Test, and I was very surprised, because the band I saw sounded nothing like the band I quite enjoyed on the Old Grey Whistle Test. Not my thing at the time. Don't forget, it was just after punk started. And this was an antidote to punk, in a way. This is more Bob Harris fighting back against punk. I did like Sultans of Swing when Charlie Gillett played it on his radio at London programme. But I saw Dire Straits. They could have been called by their previous name, which I believe was Cafe Racers. It was definitely David Knopfler, Mark Knopfler, and various people in the band. And I saw about half an hour of it, and they were playing the White Lion Putney, and I was with my friend Joe Pearson, who he took me to see them, because he was going to sack them. They were doing a Thursday night residency, and he was doing the White Lion before me or after me or whatever. At the time, there were a lot of these bands like Man and Help Yourself things, who just basically went on stage and did jams. And that is my recollection of Dire Straits. Going by that recollection, and not by Sultans of Swing, I'd say that Dire Straits, as I perceived them, were one of the worst pub rock bands. But obviously, they either re recovered tremendously and changed, or else my brain is was um, slightly suspect. So who knows? Joe agrees with me that we went to see them and they were awful. But anyway, what do we know? I know nothing. <laughs> Who's the last, truly worst pub rock band of all time?
Well, this is going to be quite controversial once again because it's the Hamsters who are one of the most popular pub rock bands on the circuit. And they were formed by Barry Martin, who called himself something like, um, I don't know, something slim. And they all had assumed names. And it was a three-piece. To me, they were the first covers bands of all time because they used to go out and do Hendrix shows and they do ZZ Top shows. From what I can remember, Again, it was practically all cover versions. They started off doing Hendrix. No reason to get excited. I remember their first album was called, was it Purple Haze or something? It was basically a pastiche of a Jimi Hendrix album and they basically played all the Hendrix tracks. Now I, Call me stupid, if you've got an album by the great Jimi Hendrix, why would you then buy an album by people who are obviously not as good, in my humble opinion, as the Jimi Hendrix experience? That is my thing. And again, I booked them occasionally, but I didn't like booking them. Barry Martin, who was a friend actually, but he knew I was very reticent about were booking them. Didn't hate the music, I hated Martin Muller music, because it was basically Hendrix or ZZ Top and that kind of thing. Everyone else thought he was great. Barry was a great entrepreneur. He so ran a record label and stuff like that. And he um, booked, I think it was Wilco Johnson and John Otway, and they went on tour around the country. And it, that was basically a vehicle to make the hamsters bigger, because obviously John Otway and Wilco Johnson had quite big followings outside London, although the hamsters did come South End. They spent most of their life playing on the London pub rock circuit. And I tried to avoid them, but not as easy as you might think. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, as I say, please like, subscribe, and watch my next video, please. Without you, it really would not be the same. And I genuinely mean that. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.